back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my newest piercing that I got about, I want to say eight days ago. I got it last Wednesday. Today is Friday of the following week. So it's been a little bit more than eight days. But yeah, I got my conch pierced and I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's right there. That beautiful blue little flower in my ear. So I'm going to be talking all about that today. I'm going to go over the pain, my experience, all that good stuff, how I clean it, just everything to do with my conch piercing, why I got it, etc. So if you're interested, make sure you keep on watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. I upload three times a week on Friday, Sunday, and Wednesday. So let's go ahead and get started. So I wanted this piercing for a really long time. I've wanted it for a couple years now and I just was able to get it now because I got a lot of other piercings beforehand. I kind of base getting my piercings around the healing, um, around what season it is because I really like to swim in the summertime and it needed to be healed before the summertime, you know? Also based on the way I sleep because I'm a side sleeper and if I got one cartilage piercing in this ear I wouldn't be able to get one in this ear right away you know until the other one is healed because I wouldn't be able to sleep on this side you know so a lot of factors go into why I get my piercings when I get them so I wanted this one for a few years now I finally was able to get it now so I definitely wanted to vlog this experience with you guys because I went to a really good piercing place uh, they only do piercings they don't do tattoos or anything but I was not able to vlog my experience there which is really sad I did ask the lady if we could film in there and she said no um, which mm, you know it's a private business I totally understand I totally get it but I do like vlogging for you guys and I don't really see a problem with you know filming I was just gonna use my phone like really I was just gonna you know vlog while she was doing it or get my fiance to vlog while she was piercing my ear so they didn't let us vlog in there I definitely would go back to that piercing shop just because it's so clean their staff is like really knowledgeable on piercings and they are part of the APP like piercing association I forget what it stands for <laughs> association of professional piercers and they're the only one in my city that is a part of that thing so I have definitely got some really good piercings elsewhere and I was able to vlog in those places but I did like this place I, I did have a good experience there besides not being able to vlog for you guys so I'm gonna basically be telling you guys describing to you guys how she pierced my ear in the first place and like what type of jewelry all of that stuff so if you guys don't know what a conch piercing is, it's basically, I'm gonna just touch this ear because I don't have it pierced. It is the piercing of the inner cartilage. So it's like this part right here and it goes through the back of your ear. So if you can see the back of this ear, it's pierced, you know? So I always thought this piercing would be kind of painful and <laughs> Okay, let me go through how she pierced it. So she basically, just like any other piercing, she put a marker in my ear to show me where it would be. And she was like, is this where you want it? I'm like, yeah, sure. I told her that I wanted to be able to wear it like as a ring eventually. I didn't want to get it pierced with a ring because I heard that getting pierced with a ring takes a longer to heal. And she did tell me that it does take longer to heal because it moves around a little bit more than with a stud. So I decided to get it pierced with a stud and then switch it out to the ring. So I want to be able to do that. So um, she basically placed it, you know, in the middle of my cartilage area and she pierced it. So I just laid down, she poked a hole in it, she told me to take a deep breath and then breathe out and then she pierced it and then put the jewelry in. That whole experience was definitely probably a 4 out of 10. I've had worse piercings. I've had piercings that were better than that. So based on the piercings that I've gotten, this was a for my Helix. I used to have my Helix pierced. I don't know if you guys watched that video. I'm going to have this video in a playlist, my piercings and tattoos playlist. So if you want to check out my Helix piercing experience, definitely check that out. I had to take it out basically because they pierced it wrong. And so they pierced this side of my ear, like the top of my cartilage up here. And yeah, so I got it pierced wrong. I got it pierced in a totally different piercing shop and I had to take it out basically because it wasn't healing. 
and that one was like a 5 out of 10 just probably because it was pierced wrong that was a 5 out of 10 this was a 4 my tragus was about a 1 or a 2 and my date was probably like a 2 so there you go those are like my pain tolerances I don't have any well my lobes probably like a 2 or a 3 so my date and my tragus I definitely did not feel like a lot of anything at all so this was a 4 I definitely felt it but it wasn't too bad it was just a pinch and then it went away well the whole hour two hours after i got this pierced it was kind of that like hot feeling like that hot stinging feeling right after you get something pierced that's how a lot of my piercings go except for my trigus and my date I didn't feel it with that but uh, for my helix I definitely felt that as well so I definitely from that point on I was like oh, okay it's probably gonna have the same sort of like healing process as my helix because it is cartilage and I did feel like the same way after I got it pierced so for about the next hour or two my ear was like hot and it just kind of had that like stinging feeling if that makes any sense so it went away and I decided that I would sleep on it well not really decided like I rolled over my sleep I slept on the side because I forgot I had it probably the third no the second night after I got it pierced and I don't have my pillow currently to show you guys but basically I have a donut pillow and that's usually what I use on piercings that are healing if I want to sleep on it because it's literally like a donut it's a donut and there's a hole in the middle and then I put my ear through the middle of it so I guess part of the back of the what's it called like the back of the post was still kind of like pushed up against the side of the donut or like on my pillow or something and oh my gosh the two days after I slept on it were like the worst pain well not really the worst pain because I did experience it with my helix as well um, my helix was way worse for some reason like I said it's probably because it was pure strong so I had a I had to ice that one all the time. I had to take Tylenol and basically this one I had to ice the next two days and then on the second day I decided, you know what, I'm going to take Tylenol, screw this, it hurts, it was throbbing, it was hot. So I finally decided, you know, I'm going to take some Tylenol and it went away and never came back since so I'm really happy about that and um, I haven't had to ice it since. It's still like, my ear is still kind of tender. In certain areas and when my hair gets caught around it it hurts like I I honestly sometimes I feel like I want to get a pixie cut cut off all my hair get a pixie cut and then get all the piercings that I want get my industrial done get my conch on the other side get my rook like everything all the piercings that I want I feel like I want to just cut my hair off get them all and then have them heal properly and not get my hair caught around them and then grow my hair back <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes because it just is really annoying when your hair gets wrapped around your piercings like it actually legit hurts. So that's the only thing like the healing process has been okay so far other than sleeping on it by accident on that one time. Definitely not going to do that again. I'm definitely going to continue sleeping on my right ear for now because I have to sleep on my side. So yeah, the bar is super long. And that's why my hair gets caught around it so she said that I would be able to change the bar if it if it all heals fine in the next two months like if, if, if the healing is um, if the healing goes smoothly I can change it within the first two months to a new like to a ring because that's what I want so next up I'm gonna be basically telling you the price as well as like she gave me a whole instructions booklet on my piercing and like what I got it pierced with so so she did tell me this piercing would take four months or longer to heal and I got a 16 gauge titanium stud I did upgrade the stud to the flower one that I have in my ear right now which costs a little bit more than if I was just to get a basic stud so keep that in mind my whole piercing with the tip and the aftercare was $184 <laughs> So this is my most expensive, one of my most expensive piercings up to date because I do always upgrade the jewelry. I want to let you guys know that. But yeah, except for my trigus and my date, those are the only two that I didn't upgrade the jewelry. And then my seconds on my lobe, I didn't upgrade the jewelry for those ones. But for the most part, I usually do upgrade my jewelry. Just because I get bored with like the standard, like, you know, just crystal you know I'm probably going to when I switch this one to a ring I'm probably gonna put the jewelry into my tragus 
because um, yeah, just get a new setup for my trigus because it's been, I've had that pierced for a while and I want to just change the jewelry out. So I'll probably switch it to this one. Did tip her 15% and I did, I did buy something to clean up my ear with, which I will get to that in a second. So yeah, that, that was the whole cost of my piercing. I believe the jewelry, so the back part was like $25 for the uh, like 16 gauge titanium bar. And then for the like jewel, like the actual jewel part, Part. I think the regular cost of just the basic Swarovski crystal ones were like $30 so $50 for your jewelry and I believe the piercing cost was like around $80 and that's, that was a price for the piercing shop that I went to I definitely went to a more high-end type piercing shop like the whole experience being there was like being at a spa <laughs> like I feel like it was just so clean and so professional looking and their jewelry was all like really high and they had like and nano metal and neo metal, etc. So, and all of their jewelry was titanium. Keep that in mind. So, I definitely went to a higher end type piercing shop. So, for the solution, I use like the Neo Med normal saline solution, 0.9% normal saline and I do clean it just once a day in the shower I use Dove baby soap just the regular Dove baby soap when I got my trigus and my dates done all I did was clean it with the uh, baby soap in the shower I didn't bother with like saline or normal saline but I definitely wanted to take my piercers advice because I don't want you know any piercing bumps to happen or anything like that so I do use normal saline once a day to clean it just on a cotton pad I soak it with saline and then I put it on my piercing I don't bother mixing my own you know sea salt solution or anything like that they told me not to put sea salt on it just normal saline so that's what I'm gonna be using and I think the bottle was like six dollars I want to say so you know that's how it added up to $184 but I'm very happy with the piercing so far and like I said I'm gonna eventually put this jewelry into my trigus one and switch it out to a ring and that's gonna be in the next couple months so I definitely will update you guys with uh, the healing process, I usually update you guys around the two month mark. So if I do decide to change this, I'm probably, honestly, I'm probably going to wait until like the four to six month mark before I even bother trying to change it. Cause I feel like two months is very like just, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think it's going to be healed in two months to be honest with you because it is a cartilage piercing and I don't want it to hurt when they're removing the jewelry and putting another piece of jewelry in or like downsizing it. Although they do suggest I downsize it because the bar is really long. So depending on the healing process, I might switch out my jewelry in two months, but who knows? So I will definitely update you guys on the healing, the cleaning, the whole shabam so make sure you stay tuned to my channel for like the next two month update or something like that or four month update i don't know what i'm going to be doing for this piercing and i will also be doing a video on piercings that i currently want to get because i'm obsessed with piercings i love ear piercings so i definitely want to get the industrial probably next the industrial or the rook if I am like going alternate ears, then I'll probably end up getting the rook because I want that on the right side and then I'll go back to this ear. I don't know. I do really want to get the industrial one though. It just scares me because I feel like that's going to be like the most painful piercing that I'll have and the most annoying to heal. So yeah, my cartilage on my ears are just really hard and I feel like it just, it makes piercings a little bit more painful, like cartilage piercings anyways. So yeah that's pretty much all for my conch piercing if you guys have any questions or anything like that for me leave them in the comments below and i will definitely get back to you so i hope you guys enjoy this video i will see you guys in my next one bye everyone